So we're often in a setting where we want to take the derivatives of a function with respect to several variables. In machine learning, for example, you could have a loss function that you want to differentiate with respect to the parameters. And there might be many parameters. Maybe you can group them all into a single vector. So instead of taking the derivatives of a function one at a time with respect to the different variables, is there maybe a way in which we can calculate them all together in a matrix form? What does it actually mean to take the derivative of a function with respect to a vector? If we could answer that question, then that could make our lives a lot easier. And that's what we'll look at in this video. So if we have a scalar function, a function that takes in a variable uh, x and then produces some output, how do we find uh, its minimum? We normally would take the derivative of the function with respect to the variable x and set that equal to zero. What if we have a function that's dependent on two variables, say x1 and x2? How will we find the minimum of this function? Again, what we will do is we will set the partial derivative of f with respect to the first variable equal to zero. And then we will set the partial derivative of f with respect to the second variable equal to zero. And we will solve these two equations jointly in order to find this minimum value. So here's the question. Could we combine x1 and x2 into one variable and then just calculate the partial derivative of f with respect to a vector x? What does this mean? More generally, what would happen if we have a function with n variables? Maybe n is very large. And then to calculate these terms separately for each of the different uh, variables could be actually quite painful. We could even have functions with intermediate variables. Or we could have functions that produce a vector as an output instead of a scalar variable and we want to calculate basically all the different partial derivatives. It would be really convenient if we could take derivatives in some kind of vector or matrix form rather than determining the different scalar derivatives each individually. And that's really the main idea behind vector and matrix derivatives. We're going to define vector and matrix derivatives to allow us to differentiate directly in a vector or matrix form. Um, and we will see how this gives us some general rules and identities which are very similar to what we have in the scalar case. We will now step through the different definitions. And just as a reminder, this, these are really just definitions. And then what we will see is by following these definitions, we will obtain general, easily usable identities which allows us to do differentiation directly in vector or matrix form. So the first one is the derivative of a scalar function. That's a function that takes in uh, a vector x uh, of dimensionality n and outputs one value, one single real value. The derivative of such a function with respect to that vector x is defined uh, in this way. And there's nothing really strange about this. All that we're doing is we're stacking all of the partial derivatives of this function, which just outputs a scalar with respect to the different scalars in this x vector. What if you have a function f that actually takes a vector, but then produces another vector? We could write that as, so we've got f, and this function produces as output a vector, where you have the first element of the vector dependent on the vector x, the second element also dependent on x, and so on up to the capital Mth element, also dependent on x. And we normally use the convention that we deal with column vectors. So we'll just take the transpose here. And this is this function f. So now what we want to do is we want to calculate all the partial derivatives of this vector function f with respect to all the different individual elements within the vector x. And that actually um, gives us a matrix. And this matrix contains all the different partial derivatives for each of the elements of f with respect to each of the individual values in x. I think you might have heard my cat there. And again. <laughs> 
Actually, as part of this definition, we also get almost as a side of it, effect a definition for um, a vector function with respect to a single scalar um, uh, variable. Um, so d of f vector function with respect to the partial derivative with respect to x1 is just one single vector. And to fit def this definition here, this single uh, partial derivative of the vector function with respect to one variable would be a row vector to match this definition. So you've got the row with respect to x1, the row with respect to x2, and so on. I'll just move this here so that you don't confuse it with the rest of the definition. Next, we have the derivative of a scalar function, which outputs a scalar, but it takes as input a whole matrix X. And again, you just stack all the partial derivatives using this specific uh, definition here. And this matrix is actually um, sometimes called the Jacobian matrix. Um, that's not entirely correct. This is actually the transpose of the Jacobian matrix. Now, if you follow the above definitions, we can actually generalize the chain rule so that it deals with vector functions. So if you have a variable u, that's a function of x through this other function h. And similarly, you have a function g that is a vector function of u. Then the vector by vector chain rule states that the partial derivative of the function g with respect to, uh, with respect to x uh, will just be the partial derivative of u with respect to x multiplied by the partial derivative of g with respect to u. And the important thing here is, in contrast to the scalar case, the order of these two terms, of this one and this one, actually matters. So just keep an eye out for that. Um, I will admit that I often mess up the order. Um, and the little trick that I used to often reverse engineer what the order should be is to look at the shapes of these different terms that we have here. So you know that by now that the partial derivative of a vector with respect to a vector will be a matrix with a particular shape. And from that, you can kind of reverse engineer the order here because this shape and this shape needs to be appropriate to get the correct shape out here. Okay, so if you follow all those definitions, then you can actually start to derive different identities. And um, the nice thing is that obviously someone else has done this for us already and in the next slide I will tell you where to find these identities. But here I just briefly highlight some common identities that I've used in the past. Some of them are pretty obvious because they're very similar to the scalar case, but technically you still need to go through the derivation to make sure that they're actually correct. And as I've mentioned in the previous slide, often the order actually messes things up a little bit. Um, but if you get, just keep your head straight, then um, you should be fine. So the first identity here basically just says you've got two functions, u and v, which are dependent on x. And um, if you take the partial derivative of their sum, then to get that, you just add up the individual partial derivatives. Um, I should say here that um, for these identities, the matrix A is a constant, and so is the vector A. And what you have here is the partial derivative of the, vec uh, the matrix A multiplied by the vector X. And if you take the partial derivative with respect to X, then that just gives you the transpose of A. And similarly, if you have um, the vector X transpose multiplied by a vector A, then the partial derivative with respect to that vector X is just A, if A is constant. And then these uh, next two rules um, I actually use quite a lot. Um, you can just step through them. So you've got x transpose times constant matrix A times x partial derivative with respect to x is just equal to this. And then a special case of this is that if A is symmetric, then it turns out that this thing just reduces to 2 times A times x. Here are two identities that um, often actually occurs with Gaussian probabilities that we'll look at later on, where you have a determinant of a matrix and you're taking the partial derivatives with respect to that matrix. Very, very quickly, how would you actually go about deriving some of these identities? So let's say we want to calculate the partial derivative of x transpose times a, where a is some constant, with respect to x. You can actually go and write out the partial derivative with respect to one of the elements in x in 
in this way. And I encourage you to step through this quite carefully. So you will see that X transpose A, that's actually just one value that you get out there. And the partial derivative of that value with respect to XI, one of the elements in X is just AI. And then you can stack all of those into one big column vector following the definition that we saw earlier. And you will see that X transpose A partial derivative with respect to X will just be equal to A. And all of these identities, it maybe gets a little bit more intricate, but um, can be derived in a very similar way. So I should say that the de definitions above and the resulting um, identities follows a very particular layout called the denominator layout. There is also a different layout which is sometimes used called the numerator la layout. This results also in easily usable identities um, and often those identities are actually the transposed versions of the identities that we looked at in, um, in this video. I don't want you to worry about this too much, but you should just know that sometimes people use different layouts. And I will stick with the denominator layout in these notes. So if you do look up identities on Wikipedia, for example, which has an excellent page with a lot of the identities, then just make sure you look at the denominator layout identities. There are also two other references which I often consult when I can't find the identities on Wikipedia. The one is uh, the Matrix Cookbook, very, very popular uh, resource. And then the one other one is a little rant that I wrote about uh, matrix and vector uh, derivatives, giving a little bit more of the background behind numerator and denominator layout and some of my frustration around that. So if you're interested in a rant, you can go and look at that. Without the context of a problem, it's maybe a little bit hard to see exactly where these vector and matrix um, differentiation definitions and identities fit into the bigger picture of what we're trying to do. So for now, I just want you to understand the fundamental idea and also know where to go and look to find some of the identities that you might need. If you watch some of the other videos, such as the one about multiple linear regression or logistic regression, then it will become clear why these vector and matrix differentiation identities and definitions, why these things make your life a little bit easier.